In this video, I'm going to explain how a new setting on the Apple TV 4K box can improve the picture quality you are seeing, prolong the lifespan of your display, and save the environment. Hello everyone, Vincent Thiel from HGTV Test here. I'm a TV reviewer and professional calibrator. Apple has just rolled out a new TV OS version 11.2 for the company's Apple TV 4K box. It's still in beta, so you may have to wait a while before it becomes available to you. But there are a couple of new settings in the new operating system that I think you need to switch on immediately, and I'm going to demonstrate the many reasons why. Just some background. On the old operating system, the Apple TV 4K streaming box had a fixed video output. In other words, when you hook up the streaming box to your TV or projector, it will automatically detect the highest resolution, frame rate, and dynamic range that your display can support, and then output everything to these parameters. For most owners of 2017 4K HDR televisions, the selected video output is likely to be 4K HDR or 4K Dolby Vision at 60Hz. On paper, this sounds excellent, but what it means is that if you watch a standard dynamic range content or SDR content on your Apple TV 4K box, it will be converted to HDR or high dynamic range to be displayed on your television or projector. With the new operating system, tvOS 11.2, Apple has added a couple of new settings, match dynamic range and match frame rate, so that if you watch SDR content, it will be displayed as SDR by the Apple TV 4K box rather than being converted to HDR. And if you watch 50Hz content, which is the broadcast frame rate we get in the UK and Europe, it will be displayed at 50Hz rather than 60Hz. Here's the thing, in the public beta, these two settings are switched off by default in tvOS 11.2, so many owners won't be aware of them, or are simply too lazy to go into the menu and change them. I'm going to show you why you should enable these settings immediately as soon as they become available on your Apple TV 4K box. Here, I have two Apple TV 4K boxes. One has the new tvOS 11.2 operating system, and I've turned on the match dynamic range and match frame rate settings, so that SDR video will be output as SDR. The other Apple TV 4K box, I left it on the old operating system, so it's converting SDR to HDR. I'm going to compare them side by side, either on one TV or two TVs. Generally, the screen on your left will be the one displaying SDR as SDR, and the screen on your right will be converting SDR to HDR. Let's do some comparisons. So this is a scene from the 2016 reboot of Ghostbusters. This movie on iTunes, it is actually originally in HD and SDR. SDR means that it is standard dynamic range. But on the screen on the right here, the Apple TV 4K box is converting to Dolby Vision, which is HDR or high dynamic range to be displayed on the television. And certainly you can see some quite nice HDR effect on the presentation, on the picture. You can see that the lights here are much brighter than the lights on the left and you can see the glint in her eyes much better than the glint here and you can see that the general lights in the background has a much brighter punchier HDR effect but there are also other downsides as well what I can actually see is that the transitions in the skin tone is very very flaky on the screen on the right here on the screen on the left here, right, the SDR version you can see that the transition on her cheek is actually slightly blocky already because of the digital compression artifacts that is introduced by streaming but on the screen on the right here, the forced SDR to HDR conversion actually hyper-exaggerates this digital compression artifact in that the posterization is much worse. So the transition from, let's say, the dark portion of her cheeks here to the lighter portion, you can see a very, very hard pixelated transition as if she's actually having a rash. You can see the same effect actually on 
Melissa McCarthy's shirt here as well. The transition on the SDR version on your left here is much smoother and less obvious, but the transition on the right here, which is the forced SDR to HDR conversion or SDR to Dolby Vision conversion, however you want to call it, is actually much harsher in that the dark parts of the shirt and the bright parts of the shirt are so harsh and so digital that it looks as if you know there's a wet patch here whereas it's much more subtle and much more natural looking here. I'm a purist by nature and I think SDR content should be watched as SDR and false HDR conversion obviously has their users to produce a really quite punchy, quite three-dimensional HDR effect. But in the case of what the Apple TV 4K box is doing, it's also introducing a lot of noise and posterization artifacts. And this is especially obvious in skin tones where the camera usually focus on and our eyes naturally are drawn to. And the transition makes it as if the skin is very, very flaky. It's as if she has a rash. Here's another scene from the 2016 version of Ghostbusters. I'll show you that it is originally meant to be in HD SDR. So what we are focusing now is on how the light falls. Obviously the screen on the right here which has been converted from SDR to HDR or Dolby Vision. It looks punchier, it has more of a HDR effect if you look at the lights here and also how the brighter part of the skin actually glows uh, the pupils, the reflections of her pupils as well. But what I can say is that I much prefer how the light generally falls on the SDR version. The transition from the brighter parts of her cheeks here to the darker part is very very natural in terms of how the shadows actually fall whereas the converted HDR version there's two quicker transition from the brighter part you can see it's extremely bright here but it is extremely darker as if there's a really bright light around here which is not really the case and the same applies to Melissa McCarthy's face as well it is too bright here and too dark here whereas on the SDR version on your left you can see how the light is shining across there and transitions very smoothly from the brighter part to the darker part of her cheeks and the shadows under her face around her neck so it is very very natural and to prove my point about the SDR to HDR conversion on the Apple TV 4K box being a bit too contrasty. I've swapped the source on the left here to a Panasonic UB900 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray player, which is probably the most accurate, the cleanest HDR10 Ultra HD Blu-ray player with the best in class chroma up sampling. What we can see here from the screen on the left is that the light transition from the brighter part of her face to the darker part of the face is still very smooth, very, very natural. Unlike the Apple TV 4K box, which is actually force converting to Dolby Vision from an HD SDR source, you can clearly see that it is far too contrasty there is unnatural peaking here in the brighter part of the image causing her nose and her cheeks here to look far too shiny. Also the color palette is much more natural on the SDR version compared with the Force Dolby Vision version on your right here because if you look at Alyssa McCarthy's face here and here this has a very, very natural palette of skin tones, very flashy. Whereas the HDR version looks more, how should I put it, more yellow and more jaundiced and more unnatural. And this is because the Apple TV 4K box is trying to map the SDR color gamma, which is a Rec 709, to Rec 2020 or maybe DCI-P3 within a Rec 2020 container on the Dolby Vision output 
which skews the color palette and the skin tones. So another problem with the forced SDR to HDR conversion on the Apple TV 4K box is to do with daytime viewing. Let's say if you want to watch some content during daytime in a fairly bright room like what I'm actually doing now. The problem is that SDR is of a relative luminance system whereas HDR is usually of an absolute luminance. What this means is that on the HDR version, the backlight and the contrast are already maxed out to fulfill the curve, the EOTF or electro optical transfer function of the HDR system. And there is nowhere else for us to go to increase the light output, let's say if we want a brighter image. Now why is a brighter image important in a bright room? Imagine if you hold a smartphone and you bring it out to try and read anything under the bright sun. The screen brightness needs to be increased quite substantially before you can read any text messages or see any photos. The same principles apply to the television as well. So on the set with the HDR on, you can see that there's nowhere else for the brightness to go. OLED light and contrast are already set at the maximum values of 100 to meet the peak brightness demands of HDR. And if we go into the expert controls here, I've set dynamic contrast to low on the LG OLED, which activates the dynamic tone mapping system. But look at gamma here, it's grayed out. So there's nowhere else for us to go. And what I can see here is that besides the unnatural looking colors and everything, the shadow detail in her hair is getting lost because there's so much light in this room and in the presence of ambient light our pupils constrict and we have more difficulty picking up shadow detail so we generally need help from the television to lift the shadow detail but there's no way for us to do that so the shadow detail gets lost here the image is still fairly bright if i can credit apple for doing that but let's see what we can do with the SDR system. So this is displaying in SDR and currently we are in the ISF Expert Darkroom mode. So the first thing we can do is to actually go to the Brightroom mode, right? So this brightens the picture somewhat. And then under the Brightroom mode, we can actually increase, there is still room for us to increase the OLED light to the maximum value of 100, which increases the light output. And then contrast can go up as well, as long as you take care not to clip any whiter than white detail or specular highlight detail. Then you can increase both to 100. Furthermore, you can go into expert controls here and switch gamma to a lower gamma, say 1.9, which would not only brighten the image, but also make the shadow detail in the hair come out brighter. Now, this is just a rough, demonstration this is not a calibrated value please don't apply this this is only for this viewing environment for demonstration purposes but you can see that if you leave the apple tv 4k box to output sdr for sdr content then you still have these means to increase the light output and lower the gamma and make the shadow detail clearer if you leave it in SDR, where such measures are not actually available on the HDR side. So as a direct result, you can see crushed shadow detail across here, whereas on the left here with the SDR system, you can increase the light output quite substantially and get a pleasing image, a watchable image, even during daytime in a bright room. And before someone accuses me of not optimizing the HDR version, we can try and optimize the cinema home mode, which generally, usually they have a brighter picture. But in this case, we max it out to OLED light and contrast of 100 and advanced controls. The gamma is still locked out, so there's no way for us to change that. Let's say if we are forced, our hands are forced to switch dynamic contrast to high, yes, you know, it certainly boosted the brightness, but still, look at the shadow detail here in the hair. It's crushed even more because of what dynamic contrast is. Dynamic contrast high actually adds 
some dynamic stretching into the picture and therefore the brighter parts would get blown out and the darker parts would actually get crushed worsening the problem and the whole skin tone palette just becomes very very unnatural so no I don't think that HDR is suitable for watching during daytime at least SDR is a relative luminance system and there are ways for us to actually improve the watchability of SDR content in daytime with OLED light and contrast driven to the maximum value of 100 in HDR mode, naturally the power consumption should be higher than the SDR counterpart. And I've connected both TVs to a power meter to measure the wattage. And hopefully you can see from the camera that the HDR version is consistently higher in energy consumption than the SDR version. Now, from this camera, you may think that the screen on the left looks darker than the screen on the right, and you will be entirely correct. But I'm filming this in a relatively bright room because I needed the natural light for me to illuminate the power meter to capture the wattage. So when I watch these same scenes in the night, the light output on the SDR version on the screen on the left is still bright enough and it gives a comfortable viewing experience and the HDR version forces the TV to go into HDR mode where the OLED light and the contrast are all pushed up to maximum. Having the Apple TV 4K box force convert SDR content to HDR will also cause elevated black level and also blooming or hallowing artifacts on LED LCDs whose backlight will be cranked up to maximum in HDR mode. Here I still have the 2016 version of Ghostbusters. The screen on your left, you can see that it's displaying it as SDR from the playback HUD or heads up display, whereas the screen on your right is displaying it as HDR10 because the Apple TV 4K box is force converting it to HDR10. Now, I don't know whether you can see from this camera, this camera has a limited dynamic range, but hopefully you can still appreciate that on the screen on your right here, the Sony logo is displaying some blooming, and also the black background is lighter in shade versus the screen on your left. When your backlight is driven to the maximum and elevating the black level, the colors are affected as well on the screen on the left here. Hopefully you can appreciate from the camera that the colors are more vibrant with more pop and depth, whereas the screen on your right here is more washed out and this is caused by the backlight that is driven to the maximum value on this LED LCD and therefore when you have blacks that are grey then it just basically washes out the entire image diluting the purity of the color whereas on the screen on your left here which is still displaying SDR and SDR and therefore the backlight doesn't need to be driven to the maximum value it can still maintain the purity and the authenticity as well as the vibrance of the colors. Here I have the two Apple TV 4K boxes connected to two separate HDMI inputs on a new Epson projector. So this is HDMI 2 and the Apple TV 4K box has been set to match dynamic range and match frame rate so it is actually sending out this Ghostbuster film in SDR to SDR as you can see on the playback HUD or heads up display on the screen here and HDMI 1 is displaying the Apple TV 4K box without the tvOS update so it's actually converting the SDR video to HDR10 to be displayed on this projector. So I just wanted to show you the effects that the SDR to HDR conversion on the Apple TV 4K box have on projectors in general. So as I toggle between the two, if I go back to HDMI 2 which is the SDR version, you can immediately 
hear that the fan noise is less, is much quieter because some projectors when they go into HDR mode they go into high lamp mode which emit more heat and therefore the fan has to actually speed up to cool the lamp and power supply and other components down leading to an increase in fan noise hopefully you can hear that through this microphone that I'm wearing at the moment but if we switch to the SDR version you can hopefully hear that the fan noise has decreased also as I toggle between the SDR output and the HDR output from the Apple TV 4K box you can see that this is the SDR version it is actually brighter and much more natural, much more pleasing to the eye whereas the HDR version even though I have calibrated this projector and I have tried and optimized the settings it looks darker with a quite unnatural yellowish color palette to the entire image whereas the SDR version is certainly much brighter with a much more natural color palette and the reason is because SDR images are mastered to a peak white of 100 nits and it is not difficult for projectors which usually run a nominal lumens or light output of 48 nits to display them but when you ask projectors to try and cram a dynamic range that can run up to 1000 nits or even 4000 nits down to its nominal lumens output of let's say around 48 nits for projectors then the image will naturally look dimmer and darker than the SDR counterpart so in my opinion there are only probably two or three projectors in the consumer world that can do HDR justice most projectors even though they are said to be HDR capable they just don't have enough light output to do HDR justice and therefore if you let the Apple TV 4K box convert SDR to HDR by default then this is the side effects that you're going to get you're going to get a dimmer picture with the wrong colors and also there will be increase in fan noise you'll burn your lamp much faster and you may have to replace your projector bulbs and recalibrate at a much faster rate hopefully you can now understand why you should switch on the mesh dynamic range and match frame rate settings on your apple tv 4k box as soon as they become available to you if you leave the apple tv 4k box to force convert the dynamic range and frame rate to a fixed output not only will the image quality suffer it may also harm the lifespan of your display and even planet earth if you found this video useful please like and share it and subscribe to the HDTV Test YouTube channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching and I'll see you the next time.